and we are on is this thing on hello good evening good evening we are live and this is yet another episode of motivational mondays today we're going to talk about haters are going to hate and what do you do about it um it's a spin-off of what i spoke about last week you know um and when i spoke about not taking things personal you know i decided that um this is a life lesson that i learned a very very actually very recently and i really wanted to know why you know something had happened to me and you know it really took my wife to kind of explain it because i honestly guys as much as i give advice on you know um following your dreams and so on i don't really see the world that ev that everybody else sees so let me just make that disclaimer one time and you know so sometimes things that might be very very obvious to you are not very obvious to me and so if it's very obvious to you then let it act as a reminder if it's not then let it help you to to, to understand as as i needed that clarification and um if you find yourself being on the other side of it meaning that you are the perpetrator i want you to take a little time to stop and look at yourself and see you know really and truly why this might be happening to you right so we're talking tonight about haters are going to hate and as as i always i would like to just um thank our, our patrons i know they get fed up of it but i still thank you because i'm very grateful so tash <coughs> nadia andrea um simone and newly on board cheryl arthurs thank you so very very much for being patrons and for helping me do so much of really really good work um, I'm going to put the, the, the link to the patrons on, on the live when I'm finished, all right? Um, and so, guys, you know, I've been doing a lot more, getting ready for a lot more production work. Um, in September, we'll be having some really, really big news. Um, my patrons would know about it already, um, but we have some, a lot of big news coming up in September, you know, and a lot of things that we were had on the back burner will be finally coming to the forefront. So without any further ado, let's start uh, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord God, for each and every person who might be hearing my voice or seeing my face, Lord Father. I pray, Lord God, that you be with them in this time, Lord God, in this time of uncertainty, in this time of of sickness sometimes, Lord God, in this time, Lord God, of of frustration and time and this time of luck lord god let that not be their portion father but i ask and I, I i i ask on their behalf lord god that in this time lord god that they will see good success that they will see health that they will see riches that they would see lord god a new life father that you have prepared for them through jesus christ i pray amen nicely so guys um for those of y'all who might be embarking on something new or you might be doing something for the very first time let's say you know um you now start a new business and you're really really excited about it hey good evening Akil. how are you going and you're very very excited about it or you know you you, you now start a new venture you wanted to lose weight for all little you know for so many years now and you decide that hey you see this year this is it i'm going after it I, I i finally want to start my book and um you, you might be sharing that information right and you find yourself being very received very lukewarmly or not even at all or trying to be ignored you know i was talking to you last week about not taking that stuff personally right and um 
especially when there are people in your life that you're treated a particular way that you're held in a certain amount of regard you know so you would have you would have made sure that you know they, they try to be really nice to them or you try to, to just make sure that they were comfortable you know around you whatever the case might be you really poured into that person life and you know that person begins to tear down your name that person begins to you know sometimes you know i mean start to tell other people negative things and you already want to know well why right it really has nothing to do with you and i'm going to explain to you like how it was explained to me and um the more that you understand that and you're able to see that is that is the easier it becomes for you to live with it right it's not a nice thing it's not nice knowing that you know i mean you had a relationship with somebody and you you know i mean for whatever and this isn't i'm mean, talking about even romantic relationships somebody was your friend somebody was your good riding partner and you know you pour into that person life and then all of a sudden they start ducking you they start not answering your calls they start you know i mean even start doing malicious things you know um but that was your friend and you really check for that person and you know i mean you really treat that person with you know i mean like it was your family and all of a sudden you know that person just start hating on you and that is the best word to describe it you know um fortunately in my life now i've been in the media a few times i've been on papers a few times you know both internationally and locally and I'm, I'm very very grateful to god for that but there are some friends who would see it right and they would never call and say hey congratulations or they never call and say hey i see you here boy you're doing real good work boy and these are people that I may have grown up with. These are people who are my friends, who who are my neighbors, and you know, um, they just can't bring themselves to congratulate you. Now you could either take that and get very very bitter with it, or you could understand where they're coming from, right? And as I said before, it really has nothing to do with you. And it took me a long time to understand this because I, I always wondered why would that person, you know, treat me that way after all we've been through, after all we've done. And the fact of the matter is, the fact is you have started on a journey without them. And they, you know, one, not brave enough to go on that journey with you. And your success, whatever it is, whatever little it is. And now people who, I'll come back to that point. But your success is like a mirror and a reminder of where they have fallen short. And so to be around you is very, very difficult for them. And, you know, that is something that you may not know or you may not have understood before, but it's the truth when somebody sees that you're being successful at something that you you said that you were going to do remember i gave you the illustration last week it will start off with hey you wasting your time to go to the gym were you trying to fool yourself and then you you start going to the gym more consistently and then the person comes and they see that you're still going to the gym huh? you still wasting your time with that you'll behave yourself now let me go on and then you say no you know i've been dedicated to it and then by the time you stuck with it for a year and he look at here look at here you feel you have a best buddy now he can't talk to nobody when it was you are along just being consistent at what you're doing but that person didn't have the fortitude to do what you did or don't have the fortitude to do what you are doing and they may want to and so silently it's an insecurity from them and and honestly a bit of jealousy you can't do anything to remedy that that is something that has to be addressed 
with that person. There's nothing that you can do. So haters are going to hate. You see, what haters fail to realize is that the effort that it takes to do something, the drive that it takes for, to do something, from the outside, people look at it and they think that it's easy. So people, I, I'll give you an example from, people see me on a stage and think that, hey, you know, I mean, look at he now, eh? he's a theater actor, he's an actor, he's a whatever the case might be. But they don't see the fear that I have to overcome to do that. They don't see every time that I have a show, I get nerves and I have to go to the toilet and take a shower just after before I come on stage. I share this on theater for touch the teen, so I'm not going to use my, my regular phrase, right? They don't see that. They don't see the insecurities of when it is I am trying to get an idea off of the ground and I have absolutely no money and have no idea how I'm going to get it done. But I still persevere for some, and I have to say, for if not, but for God, right? In this latest example, you know, when I was highlighted on the on the the PBS thing, that's an international television station, and um, I did that campaign. I didn't really want to do that campaign. It was God that was just knocking on my door all the time and he was calling me and I say, all right, God, I, I hear you. I will do it. I had no money to do the campaign. But the idea that I had no money, no resources, and no real understanding of what I had set out to do, but I just moved. What people would see would be the two minutes on the PBS broadcast but they don't see what is in the background. And so they don't understand really that even though you accomplish something, even though you start off with something like a book, that you, you they don't see how much years you have been delaying in that book. And when you finally get it, you, you're waiting for that congratulations. And it's not there because they don't understand they, don't, they can't see the fears in you to bring that to, to, to fruition. All they see is the success. And so for you who are expecting that that's your friend and that person will be glad for you, it's hard for them. And it's not a problem with you. You have done nothing wrong. But that should never deter you from doing the, your best. And you have to now start seeing people for what what they are you know there are some pointers that i just don't want to forget so please forgive me when I, I check my notes right there are some people who feel that because you are getting the limelight it is their duty to be bad to you it's their duty to cut you down a peg and really and truly for somebody who really trying to accomplish something you don't ever feel that you're on a pedestal. You're always looking for the support of your family and your loved ones to get encouragement. And when that is not there, people don't understand how much that is a miss. But what they see is the success and they say, well, you know, nah, do you, you can't feel too good. But really and truly, you don't feel so good. The thing about life is having those people around you to enjoy your accomplishments with. And if that person was in your, is in your circle, you are one of those people that you're expecting to, to, to celebrate with. <clears throat> so I want to, to tackle it from the, the reverse side. If you're a person who you find yourself always critiquing somebody else when they're trying to accomplish something, Look at yourself and really try to understand why. Why am I so bitter when somebody that I know, is, and, and it has happened to me, like, you know, people who were in church drama groups and they're like, you know, I serve in God for so long and he now started this drama group. I didn't know that. 
you all do see how much the I have slowed down now in my 40s a lot because of health reasons. I've put on a lot of weight because I don't sleep. And it's not that I can't sleep. Listen, I love to sleep. Just before I had to do this live, I had to take a little rest. But is, do you have the work ethic that I do? Are you willing to make the sacrifices that I am? And when I'm coming to celebrate it with you now, you know, you, you do as if my accomplishments aren't a great thing. Those kind of people you have to understand, you have to kind of feel sorry for, but you have to know that you can't have them in your inner circle. It's very important. You have to understand who you have in your inner circle. Because those people could destroy you. And they feel that, you know, I mean, it's it's their, it's their duty. So you, you might be a person who very, you know, I mean, like you might, conversation, like I watch my son, my elder son. Conversation is very light with him. He's a lot like me, but not so much because he talks a lot more than I do, right? But if I want to be charismatic, I can. So generally, I'm, I'm one of what you call a... a extroverted introvert so if i have to be in a public place and i have to be out and i have to be charming and after i could put it on but generally I'm, I'm a quiet person but it doesn't say that i can't socialize and when i am ready to socialize i'm quite adept at it but anybody who's very social you always end up with somebody who in your room who just doesn't like you not because you said anything offensive when you really look at it did you say anything offensive no did you did you crack something a joke that was out of time no it is that that person just don't like the amount of attention that you are getting because that attention in their feel in their eye should be theirs you understand and so that have nothing to do with you you can't stop being funny and stop making jokes because somebody else is uncomfortable in your presence it, it it makes no sense you can't stop being who you are to make somebody else comfortable and this is where loving yourself is very very important also time going on guys so i'm trying to to, to to just give me my bullet points the energy that it takes to address those people is not worth it there's a saying that to some people, <clears throat> no expl explanation is required. For others, none would ever be good enough. So for the people who know you, love you, and support you, you don't have to tell them. They understand who you are. They understand what you stand for. And they, you, you don't have to explain to them, this is why you're doing that. And where. No, they, 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 they get up and they go and they go behind you. And those are the people that you have to have in your inner circle. There are some people, no matter how much you explain it to them, they will never understand because they don't want to. Because you, as far as they're concerned, are the reason why my life is in the place that it is. And it's something that you have to know you can't address it because it's something that they have to come to themselves and come to the point where they are now ready to say, listen, I have to take some responsibility for where I am in life. And I have to do some things differently. And sometimes they may never come and apologize. Sometimes they live their life and continue to do as if you don't exist. But that is to make them feel better. And this has nothing to do with you. So you can't take it personally. The last thing I want to share with you, because time going on, I try to keep it 15 minutes. And I want to say this the correct way, right? Because I tried to explain it to somebody last night, and I, I kind of I messed it up. You have to be willing to go without the things that you want most if you want it 
and I'll explain that and I'll explain my statement. Right? Let us say you desire to have a significant other, right? But because you feel alone or you can, because you feel lonely, you cannot feel so lonely, right? And desperate that you will take anybody. You have to be comfortable with yourself, so comfortable with yourself alone that people are attracted to you. If you want respect in your field, you have to be willing to be disrespected because that is what is going to take some time for you to get from where you are to where you are. Because, you know, people will say, I mean, I've heard it. I've heard it. He's a madman. What are you doing? What are you? I've heard all of this. And then I've seen those same people turn around and say, you know what? I was wrong. And I would have loved to have had their respect at that time, but I didn't. But it was okay because I was willing to go without it in order to get it. If I, I don't know if that makes sense, and I hope I explain it properly. But it's like if you want, if you want money or material things. You have to be willing to go without it. Because what is going to happen is that you're going to jump at the first opportunity that you get. You know, remember I tell you all I always wear my chain and that kind of stuff because I've worn it one, one time. I was willing to go broken for what I believed in. And today I'm able to make a living, thank God to that very same thing. I didn't have to comp I did not compromise because I was willing to go without for how long it was it would take. And sometimes those very people that you want respect you. You have to be willing to be ridiculed by them in order to get their respect. They may never like you. But I guarantee you, once you stay your course, once you continue doing that which God has given to you to do, once you become consistent in your efforts, people will have no choice but to stop and say, yeah, that's the real thing. And so tonight I want to tell you, if you have not started, start. If you have started, don't stop. And if you're on the other side, you know, hating on somebody else, try supporting somebody today. God bless you. Good night.